get started. Welcome to the Best Practices Professional Development course for faculty. This course is facilitated by Academic Computing and is the first phase of professional development for faculty wishing to develop and teach online or hybrid courses at Regis College. I expect that we will learn a great deal from each other as this course unfolds and I'm looking forward to participating with you. Welcome. In this orientation section of the course, and throughout the course, I model some activities and information that you might want to provide to your students. I encourage online faculty to set aside some part of the first week of class for orientation activities. It makes for a much smoother semester. For those teaching hybrid courses, depending on how your course is structured, the orientation may not be as critical since you may be seeing the students in class and can orient them in person during your first face-to-face -face meeting. You will want to still have some getting started orientation materials available in case a student misses the first class or adds into the class after the first class meeting. And I'm always here to help. As this course progresses, please remember that I'm always available to answer your questions or concerns. The best way to contact me is by email. I will respond to all emails within 24 hours during the week and at least once over the weekend. Just because this is an online course, it does not mean I cannot take phone calls. I also encourage you to drop by and have some face-to-face -face time with me. My office is in 20C in Area 20A in the basement of College Hall. Course Goals This course is designed to be an online rather than face-to-face -face course so that you can experience what it is like to be an online student. Past faculty participants find it a valuable experience that really informed the way they designed and facilitated their online and hybrid courses. Research also points to this as being a best practice for faculty who are developing the skills for teaching online. The readings will give you perspective on the online and hybrid teaching and learning process as well as ideas for your own course. The interactions and assignments will help you to understand online learning from a student perspective and at the same time give you a chance to start actually planning and developing your online or hybrid course. The assignments will focus on redesigning your course for an online or hybrid format. When you are finished with the course, you will have a course map, assessment plan, an idea of how you want to use and evaluate online discussions, and a learning guide for one module of your course. In addition, you will become more comfortable with how to navigate in Moodle. This will be of value when you are designing your course. Finally, it is great to be able to take time to discuss your teaching with other faculty. This is often a luxury that faculty do not have time for, and I think you will enjoy meeting other faculty and sharing the joys and challenges of teaching with others who can empathize. This also helps to demonstrate ways in which you can foster and develop community and peer work in the online environment. Course Structure and Instructional Method this course is divided into chunks, called modules, and we will cover one module per week. Get Started is the exception. It is more of an introduction than a full module. Each module follows a standard layout that includes topics and learning objectives, assignments and activities listing, making the connection, instructor's remarks, and the accompanying assignment tools, discussion forum, assignment, quiz, etc. At times, the work will fluctuate between considerations about teaching online or hybrid to actually applying what you've learned. The goal is to make sure that you have space to think deeply about the changes that await in an online environment, but also the practical skills to deal with the change of venue. For each module, there will be readings, videos, and other resources for background material. It would be great for you to review each resource, but you may not use all of them in your work for that module. Once you have reviewed the resources, you should proceed to the assignments for the week. With any given assignment, I'm not looking for a correct answer. I'm looking for evidence that you have thought about the question and pulled in some of the resources. Time, Assignments, and Building Activity Time Commitment 
The course has been created as a real course. That means it does require a time commitment wherein you complete the activities of each week in a timely fashion. You can anticipate working on this course about three to four hours a week. There will be other things that you will be doing outside of this course, such as teaching courses of your own, but I hope you will set the time aside to work on this course. If you find that you have the opportunity to get a head start on an upcoming module, I recommend that you go in and look at the materials and assignments. You will not be able to submit assignments until we are on that particular module, but you can certainly start reading the resources and working on the assignments. Assignments. For all modules, you will be guided to create content and consider a specific course. Please make sure you choose and stick with that one particular course for your assignments throughout best practices. This will help me to better understand the context of your work and provide useful feedback. Building activity. Each week there will be an assignment with the label Building Activity. These assignments often relate to building content for your potential courses. Beyond having faculty consider and experience what online teaching and learning is like, I want faculty to also gain some experience in building co the content for online and hybrid courses. The Big Picture we will cover a lot of material in this course, and it should be said that I do not expect you to remember or be great at doing everything that is presented here. Online and hybrid teaching is just as much of a process as face-to-face -face teaching is. I want to work with you and help you to integrate as much as makes sense for your courses, but do not expect you to be perfect at everything. This is why the development process for an online or hybrid course takes time. During the development time, I work with you to develop your course to make sure it is the best course it can be and so that when you teach the course for the first time, you will be able to focus on the teaching aspects and come back to the design elements before the next time you teach the course. You should also know that this course will be open to you to return to throughout the year so you can always come back and check out the resources or search additional ideas from your colleagues. Here is the roadmap of where we will be going in this course. Getting Started Module In getting you familiar with this course, I provide low stakes activities for you to feel more comfortable with the course environment and the features being used. It is a tactic you may want to use within your own course. Getting started in a course is a balancing act of respecting that students may be a bit nervous about taking an online or hybrid course, it may be their first, and also making sure that they know what they will need to do in order to succeed. Module 1 Orient. Changing roles and approaches to learning are essential when considering online and hybrid courses. Not only do instructors need to reorient themselves, but they need to be prepared to help or guide students to reorientating their own roles. Here, the student may need some encouragement and direction about how to be more active and responsible for their own learning, while the instructor will need to let go of some of the teacher-centered focus to which a physical classroom lends itself. Module 2, Design. Planning and implementing ahead of time is the central key to success in teaching online or hybrid, as you will need to substantively see and prepare for the big picture of the course. That planning can help you make sure you have met the objectives of the course, gathered the necessary engaging resources, and also properly taken into consideration elements of universal design for learning. The Big Picture Part 2. Module 3, Engage. Without the classroom as the focus, it is important to find ways of fostering engagement from students in making the classroom more than just your notes and tests put online. If we want substantive learning to occur and for our students to be impacted by the courses we are teaching, we have to make sure the online environment is just as vibrant and as engaging as our face-to-face -face classes can be. Module 4, Assess. Assessment is an important piece of every course, but without aligning assessments with the objectives of the course, students are left with the feeling that they are doing busy work, as opposed to work that has a real purpose in their learning. 
In the online environment, there are a variety of ways to make assessment engaging and even fun for students while also providing substantive proof of their learning. Module 5, Tech. Online learning happens because of technology, and therefore it is important that we spend a module talking about instructional technology in the different ways it is used in an online or hybrid course to enhance the teaching and learning environment. This module will look at how Moodle can be integrated to aid students in meeting the learning objectives or help you as the instructor achieve pedagogical goals. Participants will also have an opportunity to explore other instructional technology that might be of use to their courses. Module 6, Teach. With the final module, I do less of the facilitating as this really is the place where you as the instructor takes the lead and do what you do best. Most importantly, I hope by doing the work in the previous modules, you're at a place where you can reflect and consider how teaching online and hybrid courses may actually impact you as an instructor. Best Practices, Quality Guidelines. All online and hybrid courses are reviewed before they are delivered. I will be introducing you to the guidelines throughout the course in the Best Practices Guidelines section of the Learning Guide. I will also do my best to model these practices in the design and facilitation of this course. A complete set of guidelines are available in the Best Practices course site and is labeled Online Learning Program Course Design Evaluation Rubric. The best practices, many of which have been modeled herein, for this week are overall design of courses made clear at the beginning of the course through 1. A welcome message that welcomes students to the course and outlines what they should do to get started with the course and how to work through the first week. 2 orientation slash start here materials that include instructor self-introduction, course syllabus, and course schedule, or links to the same, and guide students into the remainder of the course content by providing information on how to work through the weekly content. 3. An explanation of the purpose of the course and its various components. In the case of hybrid or blended courses, the relationship between the face-to-face -face and online components is clearly explained to students. Questions. Please feel free to post them in the questions discussion forum or send me an email at lance.eaton at regiscollege.edu. Thank you very much.